guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, now I've got to catch my breath and get, I'm super excited to bring and welcome our next guest speaker. Today, I'm going to, and I'm delighted to introduce you to a force to reckon with. She's incredible, Sam Bennett. Sam is a dynamic writer. She's a speaker, an actor, a creativity productivity specialist from Chicago. She's known for the best-selling book, Get It Done, and start right where you are. She's making waves with her insights on overcoming procrastination. And Sam's script for the hits musical in a booth at Chasen's showcases her creative brilliance. Stay tuned. We're welcoming Sam here. She's got her 15 minute miracle method book that's coming out in spring of 2024. She's a top instructor on LinkedIn learning and she's impacted millions of learners worldwide. So help me welcome Sam Bennett. Hey. So <laughs> team, I'm we're having some troubles. Are you not able to pin? Or is it not showing up on my side? I don't know what's it's going pinned. on. I, I don't yeah. know. For what's going on on me, huh? Yeah. I'll move around my screen. Can you, Sam, can you see yourself yeah, I can. on the screen? Okay. Yeah, well, it all looks yeah. great to me. Hi, everybody. Okay, great. Um, um, there we go. Yeah, welcome, Sam. Sorry Thank about that you. little glitch. Hi, I'm so Thank delighted. What a treat. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, yes, it is a big treat. And boy, you know, in reading your introduction, it's almost like, wow, you're following Elaine. I did not organize these. And it, it's like a divine list of speakers that are flowing out to encourage us and take us on a path. It's so wonderful when we surrender, isn't it? Yes. So tell us, how did you get to be this incredible visionary leader and speaker? <laughs> I know, well, I know, I know there's not a like a, a moment, one moment you build up to this, but if that only I could present you my 10 point plan on how to become a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm feeling the energy. Let me pull back a little bit here. It's pretty intense. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it was completely inadvertent. <laughs> I had no intention of doing any of this. I started out as an actor. Um, I was I, I I did my first play when I was um, in kindergarten. Um, I did a, a you were talking about intuitive judgments. One of the things one of the ways I think our intuition shows up most strongly is in the things we love that we don't even know why we love them, especially as kids. Especially as kids, where we just have a natural gift, we're naturally interested, we're curious, we'll sit there for hours and do X Y Z whatever it is, um, and yeah, somebody asked me once what my first memory of the theater was. And I said, oh, I remember doing a production. You know the folk story, uh, Stone Soup, right? With the villagers and the stone. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, and my mother was standing near me and my mother said, oh, Sam, she goes, you didn't just do that show. She goes, you produced it. She said, you made them do it. You were four years old and you brought in the script and you brought in the costumes and you made them. I'm like, how did I even know what a play was? I was four. Um so I, that was me all through school. I was a very dreamy kid. I was a very weird kid. I was a very sensitive kid. Um, and, uh, you know, I did all the plays in school. I went to theater camp. I went to school for theater. Um, I got a, a job at the Second City Theater in Chicago, which is a legendary comedy yeah. theater. I worked there for a long time. Um, and along the way, I just got really interested in this question of how do highly creative people make decisions? You know, when you are good at a lot of things, when you have a lot of skills and talents, like, wh how do you know what project to pick? How do you know how to promote yourself? You know, should I have a podcast? Should I do a summit? Should I stand on the corner with a sandwich board? Like, what do I do? And there is no right way, right? There's no right way to be an artist. There's no right way to be an entrepreneur. There's no right way to be an author. There's no right way to be a parent or a friend. There's just your way. So, uh you know, I was having this career in Chicago and then later in Los Angeles that was, you know, good enough that you didn't want to give up on it. I was, you know, getting paid to be on TV. It was cool. Um, but it wasn't exactly enough to support a person either. <laughs> so uh, I had a million grillion part-time jobs and gigs and projects and shows and auditions and all these things. And then, uh, but I started teaching this class called Get It Done. And I thought, well, that's a ridiculous name. I'll have to change that. <laughs> and that was like my whole brain. I, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Um, yes, don't be afraid of simple and clear, people. Don't don't overcomplicate. 
sometimes smart people like to get overly clever about things and yeah. then no one knows what we're talking about. Um, yeah. And then it turned into, and, and after I taught the workshop for a while, it turned into a book and that turned into another book. And um, it's just, it's been a, just a walk in miracle. It's a blast. Well, it looks like you've learned from a very early age to trust your intuition. 100%. And, and did you have encouragement by the big people around you? Oh, no. <laughs> welcome to that club yeah 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 not exactly a member of the happy child good club like you said mostly what they said is like you're too sensitive right so sensitive and it was a big moment for me when I realized and you all have this too there's something that you got criticized for for being a kid when you were a kid and what I encourage you to do is just remove the two I'm not too sensitive I'm just sensitive I might have been too sensitive for the third grade I might have been too sensitive for my mom but I'm not too sensitive for the planet. And now I have a job where I get to be professionally sensitive. <laughs> so, yeah. But that wasn't a cool thing even five years ago, or, you know, it wasn't something that was honored and it's still kind of an uphill battle. Wouldn't you say is to, you, you don't, that's not listed out there on your resume. I'm sensitive. It, uh, that's true. You know, it kind of depends what circles you run in. I mean, I was, I right. had an advantage in that, like I said, I was in the theater world and then the entertainment world. And especially as an improviser, which I spent, you know, 15 years making my living as an improviser, there is, whether you call it intuition or not, there is a huge amount of intuition happening. Absolutely. In voices. There's a huge, you never have to tell an actor that psychic communication is real because we, we live on it. You know, you and I'll be on stage. We're saying the lines that the playwright has given us to say, but we are also having a whole conversation underneath of like, oh shoot, I forgot to reset that chair. Could you move it over a little bit? Okay, that's great. What is that guy doing in the third row? Wow. Like we will have, there's a whole, if you ever felt like, oh, these people are really like, there's multiple levels to this conversation. Yeah, that's because there's multiple levels to the conversation. That's because we're multi-dimensional beings. <laughs> yeah. And for years, you know, I never really thought, thought anything about it I, I it was not that long ago when I had a friend say like so Sam how do you relate to your psychic abilities and I was like my what like no 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 no, no. nice girls from Chicago don't say psychic <laughs> oh yeah and I could never say that to an, a, a visionary or a leader or a CEO right they're no. all incredibly psychic and they don't know they are well, it just never occurred to me and I mean, and I think that's partly on psychics who sort of ghettoize themselves with the you know ghettoized that's a great word is you it? know Did you just make it up <laughs> no no it's a real word <laughs> oh, ghettoized yeah kind of ghettoized okay. themselves with the you know neon signs and the uh -huh. you know trickery um and then I was talking to another friend who is very psychic and she said she said well what does it feel like and I said it, I said it, that's why I think why I never noticed because it just feels like knowing like I know like I would know anything like you told me your name I would know your name like I, I, and so sometimes I would say things people would be like how do you know that I'm like I, I don't know how I know I mean I just know didn't you how how do I know anything of course I know like and she said oh yeah that's clairsentience you know some people have clairvoyance they can see some people have clairaudience they can hear um she goes that's Their feeling clair is clairsentience claircognizance is just clear knowing oh that's what it's claircognizance thank you yeah. <laughs> see yeah. that's how little I know about this well it's so just a word it doesn't even matter Right. But I was like, oh, I, but again, I didn't even know that was a thing. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's helpful. Um, and then I was remembering like, yeah, when I was a little kid and I was sure that I could talk to plants and animals. And then I grew up to be an adult who was pretty sure she could talk to plants and animals. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You were just sensitive, not too sensitive. Not too sensitive, just sensitive. Yeah. yeah. I just love that, Sam. I mean, you're embodying where I think the masses are moving and it freaks a lot of people out is having this, like, what is that? They want to analyze and over, over, I don't know, try to figure it out. And I think it's just part of our beingness. It's part of our abilities that so many of us have shut off and it's, denied. We have to remember that like the frontal, prefrontal cortex, you know, this, the executive function part of our brain up here, this, this little part up front, it's quite thin and it's quite recent in our human development of the, of the brain. So I think sometimes what we talk about when we talk about intuition or we talk about psychics, sometimes it's just our animal response. You know, it's just our, our animal being that's like, that person's scary, or that's not safe, or, Ooh, I like that. Or, you know, in, in the same way that 
animals do. Um, our ability to assess danger, that's that's a survival mechanism. And it and predates- it's part of our we, sixth sense, isn't it? It's part of our, yes, it's just part of our being, right? Um, then there's, you know, sort of learned behavior. There's, uh, you know, micro pattern recognition. There's, um, you know, making sense of things that we don't really know we're making sense of. You know, our, our brain is sort of humming along without us really knowing. And then it could kind of, and then we get quiet for a second and the brain's like, oh, by the way, here's your answer. <laughs> We've been working on it in back. Here you go. And we feel like, oh, that just dropped out of nowhere. Well, it did and it didn't. Right. So I think psychic or intuitive or whatever you want to call it is a big umbrella that covers a lot of things. And honestly, I don't care what you call it. Right. When you know, you know, it's a way of being to me. I mean, that's all I, I know it, but yeah, just know most, what you know. Of us, most of us were denied it or mm. um, invalidated when we trusted it. And mm -hmm. I think that has caused a lot of us to turn down more and more of it, which cripples us and keeps us stuck and makes us feel depressed and miserable and doing jobs that we don't like and love. For sure. And we, there's definitely a, a really strong voice in the culture that says, well, logic matters and figuring it out matters. And the things that are hard matter. You know, I remember getting, having very stern talking to, you know, from my parents about how like, well, Samantha, of course you got good grades in English and drama, but let's talk about this French and calculus over here. And I'm like, you know what? I was never going to do well in French and calculus. I got to work my, I, I worked as hard as I knew how to work and it was not, it's not part of what I do well. On the other hand, how come I don't get any credit for doing well in English and drama? Like, can we, yeah. can we talk about the fact that I'm really good at that? And it comes really easily to me. And now I have made a living my entire adult life in English and drama. Like, right. I find that fascinating. And it's, you know, following your soul's blueprint, if, you know, for lack of a better word. And so many of us discount that. And yeah. we go by what the system, our parents and and others have said, this is the, you know, if you're a teacher or if you're a doctor or if you're an accountant, that's tangible. And we can measure that. And or people make good money if you're an engineer or if you, whatever path you take. And so some of them had higher value, right? And so we value ourselves based on what others value also. And if you don't do that, then you're not going to be a success. So there's all these convoluted, tangled patterns that we end up creating that keep us miserable. And to remember that all the people who discouraged you, all the people who said, no, 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 don't be like that, do this thing. They're trying to keep you safe. Yeah, because they do they're love us. Keep, they love you, they care about you, and they want to keep you safe. And they don't know any better. You know, they're, right. they're giving you the best information they have. It just happens to be crappy, outdated information. Yeah. Um, so... And I like that word outdated because as the, as there is an energetic shift happening, a massive one, and we're being accelerated in terms of just keeping up with the pace of things, things are going so fast and changing so rapidly that we have to be able to pivot. And I think that inner GPS, our intuition that permeates through almost everything we do is key and critical for us to be able to trust it and tap into it. Wouldn't you agree? I, I would, although I question the perception that it, that it's different than it's ever been. Okay. Well, maybe it's just listening to it is different. Well, I think it's different for us because we're us. You know, it's it's new to <laughs> us. I mean, there's... Um, it's not new to me, but I'm seeing so, and witnessing. So here, here's here's what I'm saying is is that people have been people forever. Um, and, you know, there's, there's, there's scripts from, text from ancient Greece with, you know, people saying, well, those kids today, they got no respect for their elders. You know, that music they listen to, it's just noise. Get off my lawn. <laughs> you know, There's a wonderful quote from Thomas Merton um, from uh, Seven Story Mountain, where he's talking about how we live in this culture that exists to excite every nerve and stretch every nerve to the breaking point with, with advertisements and cultivating the desire for these false things and how it separates us from, from the divine and how it's, you know, it's dangerous. And he's talking about 1943. Wow. Right. There's, yeah. there's, there's, you know, when the, when the car, when the horseless buggy first got introduced, there were articles everywhere of like, it's very dangerous to travel at that rate of speed of 17 miles an hour. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was not good for the human body. So, yeah. uh, you know, while certainly the amount of data being produced is epic, the amount of the uh, escalation of, of technology, the, the that rate of speed has absolutely increased. Um, 
I think our perception that the world is changing faster and faster is one that people have always, every generation has had that feeling. Could be. I know um, in terms of physics, uh, in the quantum field, there seems to be uh, an acceleration. I don't know how to even articulate it. It's almost like an acceleration of particles or where maybe it's the consciousness that's transforming in a way that's accelerating. So our perception is changing to what's mm -hmm. happening. And I call it waking up. More people are coming in alignment with recognizing that these soft skills are really important. Yeah. Can you tell me a time when you um, didn't listen to your intuition and maybe made a decision that you regret? Time I didn't listen to my intuition and made a decision that I regret. I certainly, there are a number of relationships that I stayed in way too long where I valued loyalty. I valued other people's opinions. I valued the other person's feelings over my own. Um, and the part of it that really breaks my heart is all the times I stood there and said that everything was okay when it was not okay. And you weren't being okay, honest with yourself. I wasn't being honest with myself and I was not being honest with them. And I think I could have, uh, saved us all a lot of time and prevented a lot of heartbreak if I had been willing to say in the moment or even somewhere moment adjacent you know within within a six week period you know what that really wasn't okay with me that really hurt my feelings or i'm really really not getting what i need or you promised me something and you haven't made good on that promise what are we going to do about that yeah that makes me sad i'm i'm i i know why i did it i and um but it makes me sad well and you know our previous speaker, Elaine, she talks about everything being divine, you know, and even those experiences where we don't listen. I mean, that's our lesson. That's our gift, isn't it? To then make a choice for the next one and to say, I am going to say when it's not OK with me. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's it, it was my own version of spiritual bypassing, sort of. It was my own version of saying, like, you know what? That person is perfect, whole and complete. And they're doing their life the way they're going to do their life. I am not in the husband improvement business. I am not in the best friend improvement business. I'm going to let them be them. And I'm just going to, you know, it was like, I'll, I'll just take care of it. Like my feelings are hurt, but I'll just take care of it. I'm upset, yeah. but I'll just take care of it. And not going to them and saying, hey, that hurt my feelings. Hey, right. that upset me. Right. And not not even giving them a chance to take responsibility and 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 make a change in how they were being. And, and be aware. Yeah. Right. So this is me over accepting responsibility and kind of in that guise of being a really good person. Like I'm very right. good. I'm very forgiving. I'm very generous. I'm very, right. you know, open. And it was like, yeah, but kind of no, <laughs> not so much. Yeah, yeah, not so much. Mm, sorry. Close, so close what decision did you make when you trusted your intuition that you're exceptionally happy about? You know, I was thinking about this question because you, you know, uh, and I was thinking about there are a couple of uh, lovers and friends that I have in my life that the minute I clapped eyes on them. I felt that gong in my belly. That's how it feels to me. It's like a gong. And that sense of deep recognition of like, oh, there you are. Sweet. There a very sweet are. feeling. Very sweet feeling and a very um, expansive feeling. A very like, oh, like, oh, like I didn't know I was waiting for you, but I've been waiting for you. Um, I remember the first time I saw one of my best friends. It was, uh, I don't know how many of you, lived in Chicago, but a lot of apartments in Chicago are sort of built down a long hallway. There's a front room and then there's a long hallway with rooms, you know, bedrooms and bathrooms off it, and then a kitchen at the very end. So I came into the apartment and I looked down this long hallway and I saw this woman sitting in profile actually, and the sun was behind her. So I couldn't even really see her face, but I saw her in profile and I thought, there she is. And she's my best friend to this day. How beautiful is that? Yeah. Oh, like you really are an actress. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> I really, I got that whole picture. I love the way you painted that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And so how do you feel that your intuition has helped you build your career today? One of the things that was important for me to learn is that I really only know yes. Um, 
it was actually a therapist who pointed this out to me first. I was, I had been asked to do a show, a play in LA that I hadn't auditioned for. They were just inviting me to be part of the, the production, which was very flattering. So I was like, oh, really? Well, maybe I'm, you know, mm, thank you very much. So, <laughs> but it wasn't the kind of show I normally would have wanted to do. It was a little off my beaten path. And I was, so I was in therapy and kind of going like, well, I mean, I could, and I'm very busy, but I could probably make time. And I'm sure once I was in it, I would love it because the people are really great. Blah, 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 blah. And this therapist goes, Sam, let me tell you something about you. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> he says, you're so cute. <laughs> and he says, when you want to do something, it's done. It's done. Like, it's just a, like, it's, it's just a matter of time of maybe execution, but it's done. He says, when you don't want to do something, you equivocate. Man, did he earn his $40 copay that day. I'm like, <laughs> that is so helpful. Because sometimes I was waiting for that no gong and it turns out i don't have a no gong really i just have a you just waffle uh, i just waffle. waffle yeah or if or i start using the word should a lot and so we have another rule in my house that it says should means no should means no and the way that game plays out and this might be helpful to some of you is like oh i really should go to the gym today oh i said should now it means no, now I'm not going. I can't go, I'm not going. And then I wait. Because sometimes the next thought is, oh, but I really want to go. Yeah, I really want to get that bikini uh, body and I got to go. Uh, it, all bodies are bikini bodies, but yeah, you know. <laughs> we have to chisel away a couple layers of fat to get to that bikini body. But No, no, your, your body is perfect for a bikini right the way it is. Don't let them tell you otherwise. Fuck You're them. right. It's my vision. I just blew it. So that was a gonger. <laughs> was a gong well, but it's, I mean, you're forgiven. I mean, it's only the message we hear from every corner, every second of our entire yeah. dig deck yeah. lives, right? So it's not just you. You're not the, you're not the only one who feels that way. Um, but you know, so I'm like, oh no, I really want to go. Great, shoes on and go. Right? Or, oh, I said should. Now I'm not. I can't go. I'm not going to go. Except I promised myself that I was going to go, and I really want to be in integrity with myself about that. Okay, great, shoes on and go. So it's not. Oh, and then sometimes it's like, oh, I said should. I'm not going to go. <gasps> Oh, I don't have to go. I can just stay here. That sounds amazing, right? So it's it's not so much that should. So this is the process. Oh, I said should. That means I can't do it. And then you wait and see what the next thought is. And then and then move forward with the information from there. Do you feel like you've given yourself some freedom and some permission? Great, take advantage of that, yeah. right? Allow. This, allow. Do you, is there actually a real underlying desire that's sort of being smuffled by a should? Um, or or are there other reasons, you know, where it's like, it's a should and I promised, you know, I would be here. I promised this. I probably like, okay, great. Then you're going to do it even though you don't want to because we don't always get to do everything we want to do. Um, yeah. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Now, so the, how, nose, how, the nose don't always mean no. The nose are sometimes the nose sometimes look different than you think they do. Yeah. So I know that you're an incredibly um, gifted woman, and you've had a journey in a lot of different capacities. How are you working with clients today? Um, mostly, I have a thing called the Get It Done Lab, which is a ninety day sprint. So we go in ninety day cohorts, and the whole idea is spend fifteen minutes a day every single day on something that matters to you. Is it the same thing every day or it, it's everything, anything and everything? Anything and everything, but something you wouldn't otherwise do, right? Something you wouldn't, something that, like I said, that matters to you. And what I love about this is, first of all, it forces you to go, well, what does what matters to me? You know, is being close to my grandchildren mattering to me? Is growing my business mattering to me? Is making another $10,000 this week mattering to me? Like what matters to me? And then, okay. And then, cause again, highly creative people, like we tend to get big ideas and then we get overwhelmed by our big ideas and we think, well, how could anybody even do and that? Distracted and distracted and not priority focusing. And so we find ourselves folding, you know, laundry and cleaning out the crumbs in the, in the silverware drawer. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. And we forget that what we really want in life is we do not want to be at our own memorial service with everybody standing there going, my goodness, her tile grout was spotless. <laughs> No, that right. was, that would be my mother. <laughs> right. We want people going on the, man, she got every bit of juice out of that orange. <laughs> you know? she, she milked everything. She did. She lived out right. loud. She, she went for it. Right. She tried. She dared. She fucked it up. She screamed. Yeah. She cried. She whispered, you know, it's, it's not about leading a flamboyant life, but it's about leading a life that matters to you. Yes. Yes. And we spend all day, every day, getting everything done for everybody else. Yes. Somehow the thing that you know would really make a difference to you, to your family, to your community, to your the people that you serve, somehow doesn't even make it onto the list. Right, right. And we are also all very busy people, right? I mean, we've all got a lot of stuff to do. So, but you've got 15 minutes. You've yeah. got 15 minutes. And the beauty of 15 minutes is, first of all, it's astonishing how much you can get done in 15 minutes, right? We have a daily practicum where we actually meet on Zoom every weekday for 15 minutes. And this is how complicated it is. We sign in, I say, hi, I start the timer. Everybody puts their head down. 15 minutes later, the timer goes off. I go, okay, that was 15 minutes. And then I see this. <laughs> I see 10 faces, 20 faces going, like, that was amazing. I got so much done. I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is sort of post-orgasmic face of like, I did the thing. I'm like, I know. And then you get the spillover effect, which is first of all, this delightful level of smugness of like, why, that's right. I did that thing that I said I was going to do. Like yeah. I, I wrote that poem. I practiced that guitar. I went to the, you know, I did 15 minutes of ab work. I, you know, um, I did that. Uh, yeah. And, awesome. And, and then, and you know how it is, you know, you take a couple of little teeny tiny steps and then the universe comes rushing at you. Yeah. Yeah. All of the things that you forgot mm -hmm. that you wanted start showing up. It's yeah. almost like magic. It's because you focused on what is important. And right. then all the other things start go. Oh, that's the universe responds to, oh, she says she wants what is in her heart and she's doing it. So they bring it in. Right. More. And the thing your brain is best at is finding what it's looking for. So if you're looking for another $10,000 this week, if you're looking for partners to help grow your business, if you're looking for ways to feel healthier, your brain will go, okay, I'm looking for ways to feel healthier. Okay, I'm looking for, you know, and then, oh, we're spending 15 minutes a day on it. Oh, now I'm really rubbed up. Like now right. I'm really looking for it. Right. And they're like, oh, I'm looking for a partner. Oh, who's that tall, emotionally withholding one in the back? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Now you come bearing gifts. Uh, Sam, so I'd love for you to share that special gift with our audience. I would love to. What did I say it was? <laughs> oh, <Do> you remember? <laughs> do we have a link, uh, team? Yeah, if you show me the link, I get... yeah. Oh, it's the real life planner. Oh, that's a good one. She's okay. you, you're so, you've got so many gifts you don't know what you've shared, right? You've wrapped it up before you delivered it and you forgot. I am the, I am the kid with too many Christmas presents for you, sure. You're the one that buys Christmas presents in the spring, wrap them up, and you forget what, what's in the box. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, what did I get you? Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, go exactly for it. Exactly. Thank you. Um, yeah. So the real life planner is the planner that I kept buying other planners, hoping that they would be, and they weren't. So finally I had to make my own and it's a seven day downloadable. You can print it out yourself and it has a couple of things that I think are a little unusual. One is it's sort of an unusual way to do your to-do list, right? So there's a, a, a place for you to write down what the item is. And I encourage you to rename it. Sometimes we don't do things because we make them sound like homework or punishment. You know, like, oh, I got to revise my manuscript. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I've got to, you know, Push polish the diamonds of my words to share with the, like, okay, that sounds like more fun. So yeah. rename your project. How much, there's a column for how much time is it going to take? How much money is involved? And then how much do you want to? Yeah. Like 50%, 70%. What's your, what's your level of inclination? Yeah. And that can be, a, we often forget to ask ourselves that question of like, huh, I keep saying I want to write a book. And yet somehow every time I get to this part, I'm like, eh, I don't really feel like it. Yeah. Okay, good. Now we have a point of investigation. Now we have a point of inquiry. What's it? What's what's happening there? 
Right. Do we not want to write a book? Is it not a book? Is it a slideshow or a presentation or a summit instead? Or is now not the right time? Like, I don't know. But instead of just going like, oh, I really want to write this book and I'm just not getting to it. I can't believe I'm so stupid. I can't believe I'm not making time. It's so sad. Like, stop. Put down the whip. God doesn't want me to. I I'm sorry. Yeah, this could be a whole. ever not wanted something for you that you want for yourself. <laughs> no, it must be a Never. sign, Sam, that God doesn't want me to do this book. <laughs> right that's oh, a no. sign I hear that so much from people oh, you know? my tummy hurt oh <laughs> no 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 the divine is the intelligence is flowing through you expressing as you if you want that then that's your present to yeah. give right yeah. and and my job is to help them clear the shit that's keeping them from writing the book right yeah. and there yeah. is such a thing as and this is why 15 minutes is so valuable it's like well try it yeah. To experiment for this is why we call it the get it done lab. So get out of your head and just take action. Take some action and then see how because sometimes we start taking action and it's true, there's a lot of knees and elbows. It turns out to be super expensive. It's complicated. Like, okay, great. So now we start to modify or we say, yeah. you know what? That's just not the right time. So I'm going to take this manila envelope in my mind labeled book and I'm going to say, I will see you after Fourth of July. I'm going to circle back, right? but stop punishing yourself like doing the best you can yeah we're everybody's all silly humans <laughs> everybody's always doing the best they can yeah. and you're always doing the best you can even when your best is kind of crappy yeah yeah sometimes that happens yeah thank you so much for that because i know i'm hard on myself and um you know when you're have high expectations of yourself and then everybody around you you continually be disappointed right and so just take a breath, everybody, and just know you're, you're amazing. Well, that's it. And, and we, you know, we were taught to be hard on ourselves. We were taught that there's a virtue in being hard on yourself. Right. And there's even a little moral high ground. This is what I hear from people sometimes like, well, I'm just such a perfectionist. Like, okay. Yeah. And you mostly, you're just kind of getting in your own way. Um, and you got to remember your version of a C is kind of everybody else's version of an A plus. Yeah. yeah right so try it get it out there see whatever you know see what happens see what happens quit thinking you know everything quit thinking you know what the result of everything's going to be you don't i guarantee you you don't i didn't start doing those linkedin learning videos thinking like oh i'm gonna have a million learners worldwide never in a million years crossed my mind never in a million years that's beautiful yeah so anybody on linkedin go over there and sign up for that too right yeah, LinkedIn Learning. I've got a bunch. I got um, the most popular one is called "How to Stop Wasting Time in Meetings." <laughs> <laughs> Not that anybody's most... wasting time at our meeting. <laughs> no, uh, the second most popular one is called "How to Write Emails People Want to Read," and I'm actually doing an email training this week. So if y'all aren't on my email list, get the Real Life Planner, and that will put you on my email list, and then you can find out about all the. I love that. Stuff we're doing. Yeah. yeah, and most obviously you can unsubscribe anytime. It's yeah well no we we're not gonna unsubscribe but thank you for that permission <laughs> so thank you sam thank you so much for sharing your incredible wisdom your expertise your brilliance your joie de vivre and your uh laughter i love it i love your playfulness and helping us to maybe color outside the lines a little bit thank you so much thank you for having me thank you for the invitation i'm so glad Rhonda put us together and you had so many of my favorite people on here i was i was like oh i'd love to play in that sandbox so oh yeah. well thank you it's quite uh it's it's wonderful for me it's wonderful and i'm sure i'm seeing the comments here everybody's really enjoying the inspiration the engagement and 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 so thank you 